Hey there, thinkers. Welcome back to another episode of Critical Hit. My name is Est. And I'm Finn. And as you may know, the WGA came to a tentative deal on the 24th of September with the AMPTP, which will be ratified in the near future after the WGA members vote to accept it. Today we're going to break down an article and discuss what they got, what they didn't get, and where we think they're going to go in the future. Alright, well let's get into it. So this article comes from Variety, the new uh, WGA contract explained, AI is not a writer, solo scribe shows don't need minimum staff, and more. By Cynthia Littleton over at Variety, of course. So the WGA emerges from a long slog of strike and difficult contract talks with deal that is far richer and more comprehensive than most industry observers would have predicted last spring when the fitful negotiations began. In short, the scribe tribes a sacrifice of mounting 148 day work stoppage coupled with the extra pressure heaped on them when seg after went out on strike on july 14th gave the wj the leverage it needed to power through its agenda and yeah of course the sag after joined the wga in their strike in they, solidarity on solidarity <laughs> i don't think it helped them but they've been on strike for about uh, i think 75 days now all support <laughs> yeah so uh obviously about half of what the uh wga had at the time when the deal was um at least come to an agreement on or the tentative agreement or as like the conspiracy theory goes the fact that like they were actually waiting until some contracts were post so they actually canceled some shows yeah, yeah well that's the studio yeah yeah, they, yeah that's <laughs> of course there is a conspiracy theory they did cancel a big contract by jj abrams yeah uh and maybe the studios have some of this plan maybe they need to cut out some of that uh let's say access trim the, fa- the fat around here trim the, what do you mean by trim the fat uh, yeah trim the fat over at uh, in hollywood because a lot of actors and a lot of uh, mm-hmm. shows were going that weren't necessarily making a lot of money. It's true. They say very few, I think it's in the single digits, percentage of shows actually bring in the big audience. So, um, you know, most of the shows are, let's say, I don't want to say superfluous, if I, but I mean that kind of word, I guess, fits in this Low case. Low quality. Well, it's <laughs> just, you don't need a lot of the shows. But I think what we're going to break down in this article is kind of what they really lost in making uh, this deal. So they're going to run down, of course, a done an agreement with the Writers Association of America that they reached with the AMPT, that's Alliance of Motion Pictures and Television Productions, which is just a conglomerate, of course, mm-hmm. or all the, I shouldn't say conglomerate, but it's all the different studios, like a representation for them. Uh, the WJ asked for a minimum of six writers for a series that has been greenlit for at least six episodes per season. And so, that yeah, this says six writers, but actually when they got the really good deal last time, they were like trying to stick hard and fast with, we want 20 writers in the writers room, remember? Yes. That was like a hard writers. sticking point. Mm-hmm. So obviously they scaled back from that. They want six writers for six episodes per season. But now the agreement calls for at least three writer producers. That could even be a showrunner, of course, as it says. Um, in there, the number of uh, members of the more junior writers or staff writer level will rise on a sliding scale depending on the number of episodes ordered. So a six episode series calls for at least three writer uh, writer level hires. A six episode series calls for at least three writer level hires. Series that run seven to 12 episodes per season have to hire five writers. And series that run 13 episodes or more have to hire six writers. I don't think you'll ever get the first season of a show now being over six episodes. <laughs> Do you see how this is going? Like I told you, I think I told you like a while back now that they're starting to put episodes and seasons down to only being six. Well, it and maybe like 12 and eight. So. Maybe that was a trend and maybe who, who knows, maybe this is part of the deal all along, yeah. but it is a well, I think the, but well, you know, people never look at the side effects of things and now don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating here when I say this for not raising the minimum wage, but when you raise the minimum wage, you have to understand the side effect that comes with that. Yes. The people who get that, get uh, better results, better quality of living, absolutely. But it also usually means less jobs. Yeah. And so there is always a side effect to that. Now, probably good overall, but still there is a side effect that there's less jobs, especially for like the mom and pop shops. So I'm equating that to the same kind of context here and where if you start paying people more like you are here, uh, that's why you're getting less writers in the writer room and why you'll get less episodes overall. Um, but the people who do work obviously will make more. And Essentially, we're not supposed to see any filler episodes, right? I think they'll all be filler episodes. <laughs> Actually, when we get into this more, you're, you're going to explain more about that. But uh, I think <laughs> more, a lot more will be filler episodes. Oh my god! Uh, so the new component of the contract makes an exception for solo writer shows such as The White Lotus or Big Little Lies, in which all episodes are written by a single writer. In those cases, the writer's initial deal with the studio network or streamer 
must call for the writer to work as a solo act from the start, or as described by the Guild in a summary of deal highlights. So that just means, of course, there is uh, certain situations that will allow them to, to go outside the norm. And that's okay. Provisions are always put in contracts like this. That's mm -hmm. very necessary. There are also new rules about the duration of employment for writers. And there is yet another new stipulation designed to ensure the less experienced writers get a chance to observe the production and post-production process. Per the Guild, two writer producers must be employed for the lesser of 20 or the lesser of either 20 weeks of production or the duration of production along with the showrunner. Uh, for pre-greenlit rooms, aka the development process, requirements are that if the three writers are hired, or at least three writer producers, including the showrunner, be guaranteed 10 consecutive weeks of employment. Oh, okay there. That better addresses it. So you do get at least 10 consecutive weeks, uh, so you can't ever get lower than that, which makes sense. Okay, perfect. So not being completely screwed. Well, yeah, it just means even if the show only runs for mm -hmm. a couple weeks, you know, we'll give you a make-work project to get to that 10 consecutive weeks. Or we'll start working on next week's, or next season's, who knows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, although I got a feeling a lot of shows won't go into a second season with these new rules, but anyways. No. That addresses uh, complaints from the writers in the short duration of contemporary writers rooms made for the difficult experience and hard to amass enough earnings to qualify for healthcare. Moreover, if a series is born out of a pre-greenlit development room, at least two writer producers who worked in the pre-lit green room, <laughs> green lit room, must be hired for the series writers room. Uh, interesting. So it's just trying to guarantee the more work, but you know what you're going to see with this? I, always a follow-on effect. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it, but like when Philadelphia put that pop tax in, that was supposed to be for the best thing. But what one of the, again, inadvertent effect of that was that people stopped buying pop there. And so in, in the same context, again, what I mean by this is um, they will stop making as many shows. They will. They really will stop making as many shows. You're not going to see nearly as many in there. If you do see them, it's going to be for six episodes that go probably for the very minimum 10 consecutive weeks of work. And it's going to be very stringent. Hollywood, as they know it right now, is not coming back. No. This is, yeah, you're giving some people a chance. But in doing so, you're really, really, the, the bigger majority of people out there aren't going to ever receive uh, ever that carrot on a stick, essentially. No, only the Nepo babies will. But, you know, some of them going to have been a taking this time and, like, writing a book or doing something else. They're going to have a path <laughs> that wasn't going to turn out good. But uh, as we get more into this, the WJ fought hard and secured what the AMPTP dubbed a success-based bonus for made for streaming TV programs and movies. So, yeah, and this is what I think they really scored well on, is that now they're going to show the WGA, and now this never said if they're going to show the WGA um, just or actually release those numbers publicly, but streaming data. Hmm. And that streaming data will go on to say if 20% of your platform or subscribers view our episodes, our show, in the first 90 days, then we get a whole bunch of uh, bonuses. So it looks like they're going to be the least releasing that to the WGA, although if they don't release it publicly, of course, things always can be fudged, so I think they will most likely have to. But this is really to get those residuals going again. Now, I'm not a big believer in the... Well, I don't want to say I don't believe in residuals. I just... There's a lot of industries out there that deserve them, and it's crazy that the actors are the only one, and they act like that's very deserved, let's say. Uh, oh my but gosh. overall, I think actors it's or anyone price. sharing in profits of a company isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you can get that money, absolutely. But uh, this just goes on to say that essentially people will get more money now for if your show does well. Like if your show goes on to, like, to be viral, then you will actually pick up your residuals. Now, yeah, 20%. So here we go. For made for streaming titles that are viewed by 20% or more of service and domestic subscribers in the first 90 days of release, or the first 90 days of the subsequent year of that title is mm -hmm. on the platform, they will receive a bonus of 9000 to 16400 for each TV episode. Oh, wow. But again, because they're getting more for episodes, they are going to make less episodes to have to pay them more. You know, they, yes, I will, let's just say uh, Stranger Things, that will draw people to Netflix. But if it, it has will. six episodes or eight episodes, I don't want to say it's going to make that big of a difference to cancel your subscription. But it will make that big of a difference than only do six episodes now in Stranger exactly. Things. Exactly. And it's just, it's cool, crazy to me because, like, the reason why you get picked up for a new season is because you got all this new revenue, like, all the extra bonus that you got. Like, Hard work won't always translate, especially in this case where they'll have quotas and they'll have very minimum amount to make that. Those 11,500 writers, all of them together, are not going to go back no. working. There's going to be very few compared to what it used to be. Maybe they'll try a whole bunch of new properties because this means that they're going to want new shows all the time. 
Um, oh, but, great. Yeah. They, they, they've run out of so many ideas already. <laughs> well, they're already bankrupt on ideas, Ugh. so I don't know. I'm, I'm shooting in the dark here, honestly, because that sounds to me like way too creative for current day Hollywood. But um, overall, I don't think they're going to want um, series. I don't want to say series won't do well. They want series to do well, of course. But they won't greenlight as many se uh, series as for a second season because they might be extra do extra money. Yeah. And this has a big following at that point. Exactly. And then they'll probably try and renegotiate their contracts for the next season because it went viral because they got more money from it. Well, yeah. But, I mean, in this case, they wouldn't really have to renegotiate if they're part of the, the union. However, usually when a show takes off, like your friends, your Seinfeld, yeah. all those big ones... They always end up renegotiating for more money outside the union. So if your show takes off anyways, it was always going to do well. This is just trying to, uh, I guess, make sure some of the little guys get paid. But again, less little guys now will get an opportunity because of yeah, this. Exactly. Sit your $5 ass down before I make change. Uh, so the bonuses are equal to 50%, of course, of the fixed uh, domestic and foreign residuals, even though viewership threshold is only based on U.S. subscribers. Uh, it's kind of convenient, actually. It's a pretty good little clause for them. Good. Um, so, I mean, like I said, this is uh, pretty interesting stuff. I think that's their biggest win with some of those residuals and getting it. But uh, so here we go with the AI and artificial intelligence. So this was a big sticking point. I feel like they came to kind of a consensus on that fairly early, but it was always touted as a big point. So we're going to talk about what they get here. So here they go for AI. Per the guild, AI can't rewrite or write or rewrite literary material. And AI-generated material will not be considered source material under the MBA, meaning the AI-generated material cannot be used to undermine a writer's credit or give separated credits. So essentially, if an AI helps them write it, doesn't matter. It's the writer's um, credits anyways. It's his credits. Even if the, the AI were to help him, it's indistinguishable because the AI can never be granted those credits. So the studio can't receive, receive it. A writer can choose to use AI when performing writing services if the company consents and provided that the writer follows applicable company policies. But the company can't require the writer to use AI software, such as ChatGPT when performing the writing services. So again, funny, they didn't want AI to be interfering with them, but really what this says is AI can assist them, and in fact, if AI, if AI writes the whole thing, and they sprinkle in a little bit of their, yeah, their own let's say, comedy or something on top human. of it, essentially that is now their work. That is oh their creative, God, that they're going to see residuals for that, even if they use AI. Which is hilarious. I almost feel like that's already been done, but now it's in contract. So those six <laughs> uh, episode seasons are starting to look really good right about now. And that's why I mean a lot of the more will probably be filler because it will be a lot more done by AI yeah. with a sprinkle of human touch to it. Wow. Yeah. Gross. The company must disclose to the writer if any materials given to the writer have been generated by AI or incorporated AI generated material. Yeah, makes sense to me. And the WJ reserves the right to assert the exploitation of writer's material to training AI is prohibited by MBA or other law. And that's uh, there's a big lawsuit going on right now by a couple of big writers. George R. R. Martin is, I think, leading the charge in that one. But it just, uh, it's just because they're teaching AI how to write better, how to do things a lot better, and they're using people's work of art or books, creative works and properties to do so. And by doing this, they're saying that, of course, they never um, were allowing this. So they're not getting any residuals. No one's paying for the book. They can get it from this. And so that's just a sticking point that I think the writers are trying to include in this now, even though their work looks like will most likely encompass a lot of AI. I don't want to say all the best showrunners or the best AI or the best writers will do this, but it will definitely happen. And now they're just going to be given credit for AI work. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Or at least they can under the contract of this rules. So like I said, um, this goes into, of course, uh, new IPs, a second step is required whenever a writer is hired for the first draft screenplay for 200% of minimum or less, including the original non-contract. Uh, but those are the main points here. So the writers got uh, AI, they got residuals, uh, they're going to be paid a little bit more compensation for doing minimums, and now they can use AI in all their work, and it's legal. Yeah. And, and they can copyright it. If you realize that your shows are being trashed, this is the reason why. <laughs> But those are the big sticking points for this one. I actually think they, they their contract wasn't much better than the one they got uh, so presented monumental. with about three weeks previously. Because the big sticking point back then was 20 writers in the working yep. room. Now mm -hmm. you got two. Yep. Which is what the studios were kind of saying at the time anyways. Congratulations. Yeah, honestly, this is just... The way I read this, There's way, like, except for the AI bit. Real, and, I mean, realistically, that's just to paint my numbers. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's no big change here. There's going to be less people working. I think those 11,500 uh, WGA members are going to be pretty upset when this all comes to fruition and they see how many or how few jobs are now out there for them. Well, 
well, this could go two different ways. This could make like all the shows be really, really good or really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, all shows are already getting pretty bad. So I think uh, just more for the, we're going to see more of the same, but we're going to see a whole lot less of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, either way, I don't think that WJ came ahead on this one. I think that the AMPTP actually came uh, out ahead, and I don't know why they strike for that extra 30 days. But. I don't know. Good job, Hollyweird. Yeah, but you know what? More money for the ones who do get it. So, uh, you know, good job. Uh, if you want to tell this as a success, fine. I don't think it went incredibly well for them, but the ones who do get paid will get paid a little more. Good job. But anyways, that's all I got. Uh, you got anything else? No, I have nothing else to say about this weird Hollywood type of thing, whatever they do, their own ecosystem. <laughs> They're going to tout this as a success for years to come, I don't think. But anyways, uh, thanks for sticking with us till this point. And if you uh, want to see more like this, please let us know down in the comments. Or otherwise, uh, we will continue doing movies, news, reviews, and maybe a few rants. <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Toodles. Bye, guys.